Everyone wants to live an inspired life, yet so many people search for happiness following the footsteps of peers and taking advice from people who have different values and outcomes to which they're searching. There are people born into wealth, graduated from the best universities in the world, and there are people who have none of that and yet are living extraordinary lives full of fulfillment and reward. The purpose of this podcast is to share insights and strategies that allow you to question the status quo and think freely, so you can design your life and be who you want to be. We get one life. Time is our most valuable asset. I believe that when we're free and able to focus on meaningful work, we become better human beings. This is Always Free, and I'm your host, Jason Greystone. Welcome to the leading podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation. Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. You can connect with Jason on social media and subscribe to the Jason Greystone YouTube channel for weekly videos. Don't forget to also subscribe to the weekly newsletter to receive frequent educational content and action steps to help you design your life so you can be who you want to be. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongreystone.com. Well, 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 welcome back to the podcast, guys. Hope you're having a good week so far. I uh, hope lockdown's treating you well in this time of isolation and uh, huge, huge social distancing. I say social distancing. I think I've never been so social during this time. Uh, I think it should be called physical distancing, not social distancing. I think there's a incorrect kind of phrasing there, but hope you're doing well. If you're listening to this for the first time, this is the number one podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation. And if you're, if this is the first time you've listened to it, I do recommend that you go back to the beginning and start at episode one, because I kind of take you on a journey of, of a series of strategies that you can really easily digest and implement into your own lives and, and kind of, and get great results. So uh, highly recommend you do that. But this week, we've got a real treat, and uh, we've got a special guest on, a good friend of mine, Jonathan Holton. Before I get into that, I kind of want to lead you into the, the importance and, of this ep- particular episode. So those of you who listen to this podcast, and those of you who read the newsletter, you'll understand the always free principles. And the always free principles come from a methodology that is now my Tears of Freedom program. But the Tears of Freedom program is a, is a methodology of basically my life, the strategy that I've used in my life to, which I believe is the most efficient way to build long lasting and sustainable wealth for yourself and your, and your family. So we've been through mindset. We understand that you have to have the right mindset. We know we have to have a strong objective and a clear cause, a mission. We know that we have to build the system. We need to build the liquidity system so it's there ready to turn on and ramp up and ramp down depending on how we're, you know, what income is coming in. We then understand we can grow that by investing. And then we understand that we can grow it by two other uh, means of the methodology which is personal growth and business growth so personal growth is where you're you're building yourself as a personal brand you're sharing that message with the world so people resonate with you at a deeper level you connect with people at a deeper level and people are inspired to hear what you have to say they want to share what you have to say and that then leads into business people think that they can kind of start a business and they struggle to kind of get the business working and they wonder why the profits and the income aren't in the business when really it's, they've done it the other way around. They're trying to advertise a business uh, and it's kind of ass about face. Whereas if you work on yourself first and people connect with you, any business you launch will work. It just, it, people just want part of what you're doing. They want more and more of what you're doing. So the most efficient way to grow business income is to first get your personal growth right, your personal branding right. So the guest that I've got on today is Jonathan Holton, who is an absolute genius in LinkedIn in particular. So this is a great crossover of both of them. This is building your brand online and through LinkedIn and then using the power of that platform to cross over into business. And I think it's really relevant and very apt at the moment particularly as there's lots of people who've kind of got these doubts and fears about using LinkedIn and they've got these misconceptions about LinkedIn. So Jonathan's, I'm going to let him introduce himself in a second, but he's going to smash all that out of the water and give you, as always, in the Always Free, we give you actionable steps that you can go away and implement immediately for immediate results. So welcome, Jonathan, to Always Free Podcast. Thanks for coming on, mate. Thanks, Jason. Good to be here, mate. Thanks for inviting us on. Appreciate it. 
Good stuff. So I know we're working together inside the Tears of Freedom program, but for, for those who don't know who you are, give us a bit of a backstory uh, of who you are, what you're up to in the world. Yeah, awesome. So, um, well, backstory, that's, that's a really good one. So I started my career as a police officer. I'm not going to say the day I was born. Let's start back at the, uh, the career. Let's not go to the day I was born. Um, but yeah, I was, I was a police officer. That's where I started. And it all began for me um, wanting to make a difference. And that was one of the key things is I wanted to do something and give back. It's a bit cliche, but I think everybody listening to this um, will understand you want to give something back. Um, one of the things with this horrible COVID-19 thing that's been going on recently, I don't want to dwell on it because I want to be positive, but I've seen like you have so many people doing positive things like that 99 year old guy who's just made like 12 million for the NHS because he wanted yeah. to give something back. We all want to do it at any stage in life. Um, but I was unfulfilled. I just didn't have the uh, fulfillment sense of achievement in me um, that ticked that box. So I left, I went into business and this was about 10 years ago and tried my hand at different things within business, went into media, worked around the world as a TV presenter, did live TV broadcast to like 950 million connected homes. That was the scariest experience of my life, which kind of started by um, the chief exec of the channel basically going, listen, our key presenter's not here, go and do this. And he literally threw me in front of the camera. Um, best way to learn in life sometimes, guys, I think it's just to jump in there and get it done. And if you mess up, who cares, laugh, carry on, you, you'll, you'll get there. Um, so that's kind of where I started, traveled the world doing that. And then I moved into the world of uh, marketing and consultancy and I niched up in about 2015 into LinkedIn. And a lot of people went absolutely nuts at me saying, John, you've got this great business, you know, you're growing really nicely, the EBIT's looking positive, you could be selling the business in a couple of years. And again, I was unfulfilled. I thought I want to challenge, I want to embrace something new and different. So LinkedIn became my world. Um, and becoming an influencer, consultant and strategist now, I work with brands all over the world. These are C-suite execs, these are small business owners, and I coach them and develop them into becoming these personal brands. And then with the grounding, like people like you, Jason, that bring into their lives through the tough courses, you can actually then really accelerate them on and see them become the best that they can be. So all in all, that's me. Um, I'm, I'm very much a transparent, open and honest guy. And I just, you know, whatever value I can bring to you and your audience today, mate, let's do it. Let's see what we can bring to their table. Amazing. So the way that the kind of always free structure uh, is kind of laid out in the newsletter and the podcast is normally we kind of address mindset uh, first. So you, you mentioned you was on TV, okay? And now you're teaching people how to boost their, their personal brand and per, yeah. uh, their message via LinkedIn. Um, some might say like, Okay, it's easy for you. You said you was on TV. You've been in the camera, right? It's it's really easy. And you say, you know, jump and and learn and deal yeah. with it later. But this is a real problem, right? This is a, one of the yeah. biggest stumbling blocks for people building their personal brand. I think it's going to be perfect. I think it's got to be, you know, ideal. What have you yeah. found that holds people back? First of all, and how can they kind of? What what do you find are the challenges and how to overcome those challenges from a mindset perspective? That. That's just awesome questions, and I think they're key questions. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be completely transparent in the spirit of how you operate as well and just kind of reverse that to my own um, perspective. So um, was I nervous when I was thrown onto camera in front of all these millions of people live with no script, no telecues, nothing? This is literally just go make it work. Um, and not even that, I'll tell you the true story. There was actually 5,000 people in a live audience in front of me as I was doing it, not just on TV, but I was in a live setting. So it was terrifying. Wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> I can still remember. And my knees were chattering. You know, I've got knobbly knees anyway, being a six foot two. Six foot two <laughs> yeah, anything. But um, I, I think really the big thing is, is that I always doubted myself. And I went through, um, I, I was adopted as a kid. It's a part of my story and a part of my why, really. I'm, I'm big on this why. Um, I was adopted as a kid and I had a choice of either becoming really angry and bitter about what I went through or I use it and I take it and I embrace it. And, and I think that experience as a child has always held me. And, and when I was in that moment going onto the TV channel, um, I just thought to myself, back to that moment of when I realized I have to be who I have been born to be. And mm. nobody has the control over you for that. You know, that's my choice, my destiny, my decision is I'm going to achieve this no matter what. And, um, 
as nervous as I was and, and, and I'm sure I made mistakes, I took a small step, which was I took a deep breath and I went, what's the worst that can happen? You know, and then I just started talking. And I think you're quite right. People do question themselves. And I think if, if you're listening to this and you're one of those people who is questioning yourself, all I can say to you is be yourself. And if you are not amazing on camera, be open about it. And mm. actually just say to somebody, say to the audience, I'm no good at these videos, but actually I'm just going to be transparent and tell you what I think. And here are three quick tips for you. Bang. Stick to what you're great at. Um, being a tennis player growing up as well, I was always told to use my forehand because my backhand was awful. Run around your backhand and hit with your strength. That's what I would say to you. If you're not great at it, try it, give it a go and be, be uh, transparent with your audience. And if you get mm. it wrong, who cares? Just be you. And I think that's really my biggest tip. Be yourself, be secure in your own skin and don't try to be something you're not. Awesome. Great, great advice. So when it comes to LinkedIn in particular then, um, I think a lot of people have got this kind of thing about it being business, you know, yeah. and, <laughs> and they kind of got this impression that there's a business sat on LinkedIn, like a, like a building <laughs> on LinkedIn, right? Yeah, or, a, or a logo. Yeah. And, you know, what I, what I always look at any platform as is, although there's co probably three categories of entertainment, education, and motivation across all platforms, yeah. um, and there's really only those three, behind all that is humans, right? That's, so it's, it's right. the human using LinkedIn. It's not a bloody yeah. brick and mortar building. It's not a corporate. It's a, yeah. it's a person. And each of those profiles are persons. So why is that? Like, why has it got that kind of that outlook and, and you know, what are your thoughts on that? What, you know, what, what have you found? Do you know what, if there's, there's one topic that I love talking about, it's the LinkedIn police and, and you, Jason, you, you may know this and people listening in, it's when you share a piece of content on LinkedIn and they come back to you, your audience, your network, and they say, this isn't professional content. You should be not sharing pictures of you and your family. We should be talking about these topical issues, educational yeah. issues, industry topics. Um, I've got to be honest with you. I, LinkedIn started as a recruitment platform back in the day. That's yeah. really what it was. And I think people even now still think that that's all it is. I, I fundamentally disagree. I think LinkedIn is the greatest sales and marketing platform that you will ever, ever come across. And it's growing like the 675 million plus users now. Um, I filmed a course fairly recently, as you know, Jason, we talked about it. But in that course, I started by the course saying it was 615. By the end of the course, it had gone to 675. Um, so I had to correct that in the course because it's growing so quickly. Yeah, um, right. You know, it's crazy. But the perceptions on LinkedIn, um, I don't know. People seem to have this stiff upper lip and, you know, you can't talk about certain topics. Honestly, the best content on LinkedIn is when you are personable, when you can relate to your audience. And of course, if you're connecting with the people that you want to do business with, the right people, then they should get you. If they don't get you, disconnect with them. Get rid of them. You don't need them in your life. It's like a toxic thing in you. You don't need them. Totally. I think, I think mate, to be honest, there's so many people who will connect, connect, connect to have this ego. And, and it's like, I've got, you know, 25,000 connections. I've got, mm -hmm. you know, 50,000 followers on LinkedIn. Well, great. But who's buying from you? I'd rather you have 500 people who love you, who love your content. And they yeah. go, damn, this Jason, everything he's sharing, I want it. Where do I buy? Where do I subscribe? That's what you want. And it's the quality over quantity. But I think, to be truthful, the age demographic and LinkedIn, it used to be really a lot higher, maybe a right. lot more old school people. Um, and how business used to be done is not how business is done today. Like we're no. doing this now and, and hopefully people are getting encouraged and infused and they're feeling a bit of the buzz that we've got going on and they'll take that away and apply it to their lives yeah. um, with some great teaching and foundation. But like olden days, it used to be you get on with it, you do it. LinkedIn's not like that anymore. The age demographic's coming lower. The spread of businesses and sectors, it's there for you no matter how niche you are. And I think really now we're going through a culture shift to get the, the fun Instagram audience that you and I love to play about with. They're coming over to LinkedIn now mm -hmm. and bringing it, bring the youth back to it a bit, a bit of buzz and energy. So I can't give you a scientific right. reason for it, but my experience has told me 
the demographics changing and LinkedIn is for everyone, but we've yeah. got to change the culture. Of so what you're using. so it's, it's just the evolution process of LinkedIn, exactly. just like, just like Instagram, right? Instagram was just to take yeah. photos and, and now it's kind right. of much, much more. Um, and there is an evolution of, of social platforms, but what you've just touched on is just, it kind of sums up what I was, what I said at the beginning, right? It's, it's people buy from people. Got it. They don't buy from companies and the, yep. the people that buy from you are the ones that really resonate with your message right. and what people are afraid to do that I see, the only way you get people to resonate with your message is you polarize them to your message. You don't go out there and try and please everyone. You don't go out there and try and not upset everyone. You have your message and you stand true to your message and then if you build it, they'll come, right? So uh, yeah. great saying from the field, I think it was a field of dreams uh, with Kevin Costner. If you build yeah. it, they'll come. It's so true. And yeah. you want to be famous for a couple of thousand people. You don't want to be famous for 50,000 people because if you've got an right. army of 2,000 people that are raving about you and very, yeah. very loyal, they will naturally want to learn about your business. They don't care how corporate or clean cut it looks. In fact, I would argue that you know, people want a bit of rough and ready and, and kind of a bit of an insight. They want just that they want to see that you're human. They want to see that uh, you're able to kind of confirm their suspicions. So there's going to be people out there that are like, I've got this little niggling suspicion and you've just confirmed it for me. That is like a, a bang. I'm with you on that. Yeah. So there's certain things like that that you, that that are important to get out on no matter what platform you use because people buy from people, they don't buy from businesses. And one of the things I'm seeing at the moment is a lot of people are using Facebook groups, okay? So what they're afraid to do is they say, well, my clients aren't on Facebook. <laughs> and, yeah. and again, it's like this, this building can't set up a, a Facebook account, right? So this is yeah. corporate. they're on LinkedIn, they're not on Facebook. So what I've been saying is that if, if you are on LinkedIn and people do have this perception of, oh, I, I'm, I can't, because of compliance, because I might be some big organization, I can't comment or say certain things because of our compliance or policy rules. Um, a great way to do that is to get them and say, look, if you enjoy this discussion and you've got something to say, you could join our private Facebook group and you can kind of yeah. filter those humans into your Facebook group where they'll feel confident to have a, have a say, right? And have a, what do you think about that kind of, that kind of strategy? Yeah. Mate, you're on the same page as me. I, I think um, psychology, it, this is all about psychology, right? Mm. It's about getting people into a place where they're comfortable to talk about different topics. Um, somebody who's FCA registered, for example, may not want to talk about certain topics on LinkedIn, especially in an open forum. They may want to take it into a LinkedIn group. Okay. I'm not a massive advocate of LinkedIn groups. I think they're massive, overly, overly saturated, but Facebook groups, they are back up and coming again. And, and I think if you can take somebody from that environment, you can bring them into a conversational place where they can be free. And the only way that you're going to actually better yourself is by being free and being truthful and open and honest. So I agree yeah. with you. I think that the psychology at the moment, um, people trying to understand how the human mind works, that is really what, what I do as, as a marketer, as, as somebody who trains people. I help people understand the mindset of the customer that they're trying to reach. And if you can reach that person at a place that they're chilled, relaxed in their living room or the cave, as I will call this room, um, you get them into a place where they can smile, they can laugh, they can be themselves, talk about the kids, talk about the social lives. You get so much more from it. So yeah, I'm completely with you. Get them into Facebook. That's where they are as well, right? They've got yeah. a social life. You know, they'll be on Instagram. They'll be on Facebook. Get them in there. Get them talking. Cool. So could you share with us just a few kind of insights that would be really, uh, not kind of action steps, but insights you've learned about the LinkedIn platform as a whole that you could share yeah. that people didn't know? Yeah, look, I think um, let's kill some myths on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn will generate you, point number one, it will generate you sales overnight. It's not going to do that. Um, I think anybody who promotes the silver bullet and says, oh, you know, sign up to this course, pay this, do that. And do you know what? In five days, you're going to be there. Not the case. It's a journey and a process. Mm. And, you know, it's that classic, you know, line that goes up and up and up and it goes down and it dips up and down. That's life. It's like you and you look at your stocks and your trades. You'll see that <laughs> line going up and down all day. And it's about pinpointing that right moment to strike. But you know that you invest on day one. By day 100, you'll yield your return if yep. you do it wisely and sensibly. Um, and the thing with LinkedIn that I have to make so clear to people is it's all about consistency. 
my clients who work with me and they spend, let's say my normal, my normal timeline, if I'm honest with you is by about month three, if you're still with the program, if you're still digging away at LinkedIn, you're still posting your content. I think you're going to do quite well because you've gone through the dip of going, nobody's liking me. You know, that, that thing that we all yeah. have on Instagram where we don't have enough likes, get rid of it. LinkedIn is about eyeballs. So it's about how many people are seeing your content. If you go viral and you will, if you stick to a pattern, you post at the same time every day. I always go 7 a.m. Do it every day at 7 a.m. Um, and there's a certain way you can do it. And by all means, I can show you at some point. But if you post at the same time every single day, you will develop a regularity. The algorithm, the news feeds of LinkedIn get used to you and you will become seen in more and more places with your target audience and their audience as well. That's what you want. So my biggest key insight for you is consistency is king on LinkedIn, making sure you're sharing the content at the same time every day. Be true to yourself. Share it in yep. the same format and you will start to see results. You will not sell overnight on LinkedIn. Um, you want to accelerate your growth on LinkedIn, you can inject your database into LinkedIn. I mean, this is something that a lot of people don't realize. You can actually import a CSV file with all of your data into LinkedIn, and it will boost your connections through the roof within 24 hours. I mean, right. you're talking about 10,000 people like that who will get an invitation from you. But my biggest piece of advice again, don't do it until your foundation is there, until yeah. you've gone to the basics. Get your profile picture done. Get your header looking slick. Get your education looking slick and get some content out there because we can rush it, can't we, Jay? You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. people want to get to that finish post. Take your time. Chill, breathe, step by step, month by month, day by day. Yeah, very, very good insights. So I think that, that is, that's relevant across all platforms. Um, you know, whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, or, or even this podcast, the fact that this podcast comes out every Thursday is for a certain reason, right? And I'll share this with you. It's because uh, it's getting towards Friday and people's spirits are higher. They take more from the podcast. They're more encouraged to take more actions with me through this podcast. Yeah. And they've got this kind of good feeling, you know, tomorrow's Friday, they're going to, they're going to feel motivated the reason that the podcast lasts between 18 and 33 minutes is because that's between the average commute and the average adult attention span. So I keep it between that 18 and 33 minute mark because of that. And that consistency alone has allowed me to have such a powerful connection with people. It's unbelievable. And the subconscious level of trust that you get from doing it at the same time okay. is uh, unbelievable like I, I heard it you know they, there's a reason that they call the news at 10 the news at 10 is because it's at 10 every night and if you showed up one night and it weren't on and they just say oh, we're gonna do it at 11 tonight <laughs> you'd lose, lose a lot of trust right it wouldn't be like what the hell not that i promote right. watching the news but very very uh, good insights there so for everyone listening now everyone's trying to get online quite rapidly at the moment now so yeah. everyone's realized you know although you know, many people have been promoting this for a long, long time, but there's a, the mass market are really now open. They're now savvy to the idea that actually, <laughs> geez, I wish I'd done this a, a long time ago. And now it's kind of yeah. scramble, scramble, scramble to try and get online. Um, what are some of your best action steps that people can take now immediately to really kind of progress, you know, in a short span of time. So just okay. even that, that setting up or just so they get momentum and get um, motivation. Yeah, absolutely. So listen, if you've been on, uh, Jason, if they've been on your program and people are listening to this, having been working with you for a period of time, they will know the value of foundation um, and, it's, mm. and it's imperative. So unless you've got the foundation, my advice is stop rushing and take your time with it. However, if you have the foundation there, if you've got your LinkedIn in a great place, if you've got your brand ready, you've got your product ready, you've got an existing business and you need to accelerate fast, my honest suggestion to you would be look at your customer journey and make sure that from a sales cycle perspective, because a lot of people miss this out, right? They look at LinkedIn and they go, it's the same as any other platform. Mm. LinkedIn for me, I think it's a completely different animal and a different beast and you need a, a complete unique strategy for LinkedIn over anything else. It's completely different. But what I would say is devise a sales strategy, devise a customer journey on LinkedIn so that you're taking the people, your connections through to a clear end goal. What do you want them to do? What's the call to action? So if you've got that mapped out, and you can bulk people or put people into a great sales funnel through LinkedIn or a 
a development funnel, maybe you just want more brand awareness, make sure then that you go for the bulk. And that is that you import your database into LinkedIn. If you want to see massive growth overnight, import your database into LinkedIn. And you can do that by clicking the My Network tab. And there's a little click button on the right hand side that says import your network. You can import your whole database in and you will grow very, very quickly. Um, what I would say to you as well is if you don't want to do that or you don't have a database, you can go to places like Experian. You can purchase a database and the Experian database purchases about 15p per record. But you can get any decision maker from anywhere in the world, pretty much. They've got relationships globally. So you could target any job role, any function, any size of business. You've got a real profile of who you want to reach. You can find them, get the data, import them, and LinkedIn will automatically match their email address to the database and LinkedIn's database so you can grow quickly. So that's one thing to do. It's a bit of a sneaky beaky one, but it's really, really good. And it's fully legitimate. It's a function on LinkedIn. You can do it. Yeah, um, right. It's a, it's a custom audience, basically. Big time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're not kind of looking at going, oh, I've got these 20,000 connections. No, I've got mm. 4,000 of my target customer. And what you've got to think of as well is that those people are going to be seeing your content immediately. So I would say to you, if you want to get some, I'm, I hate the word viral, all right? I do mm. use it, but I hate the word viral because I think everyone gets obsessed with it. Um, what is it to go viral? Well, I think it is to become popular with your, with your target audience. That's how I describe it. It's better than going, oh, I got 20,000 likes or 250,000 yeah. views. Um, what I would suggest is if you share some content that's personal to yourself, start building up your engagement again. If you've not done it before, share a post about how home living has been when you've not been able to get into the office, you know, how you've got on with your family and some of the struggles that you've had and how you want to encourage others. There's one thing LinkedIn hates and there's stats to support it. I think it's about 72% of people on LinkedIn will not buy from you if you are a self-indulged individual. So if you're constantly talking about, look at my contract, look at this, look at that, they ain't going to mm. buy from you. But if you talk about things that are real and personable and you mix it up with other content, then they become really attracted. So, so two things, maybe first and foremost, post something personal, something that means something to you, something that brings value to your audience. Then number two, go for a data import and you will see yourself explode very, very quickly. But make sure that you've got your mechanisms in place to capture the people who come through. So if you're given a call to action, make sure your landing page is done. Make sure your email systems are ready. You know, don't just do it and panic. Um, one of my biggest clients at the time, a true story of this, and, it, and it, was, it was the best and worst experience of my life. And I'll be completely honest with you. Client was paying a great retainer fee. Um, we did a campaign with them. And, and essentially, we, we knew that they were going to do really well. This is a global brand in the financial markets, right? These guys were, they really uh, work with IFAs all over the world. They wanted to introduce a certain type of product to these IFAs to sell. Um, we knew it was going to do really well. They said they knew it was going to do really well, but they weren't prepared for it. So when we came to the point of doing a campaign for them, they generated about 800 leads in about six weeks. Now, they didn't even think they were going to get close to that number. And, and it absolutely decimated the sales team. They didn't know what to do with all the work. They, they couldn't cope with it. <laughs> um, and that work's continued on and on. The key is preparation, guys. Make sure you're ready and have confidence in your ability to make sure in your mind you know it's going to work and push and push and push until it does. Yeah. And it will. Key little tips for you there, hopefully. Really cool. Okay, mate. Well, that, that's, yeah, I mean, that's amazing insights, amazing tips. Um, finally, then, do you have any tips on setting up your profile and what that might look like? Yeah, I, I do. And, and I think a lot of people um, overlook this. I mean, Jason, you talk an awful lot about, you know, early days of YouTube SEO and how you SEO YouTube, the hell out of SEO uh, for YouTube to make it really work. Uh, LinkedIn is exactly the same. LinkedIn and Google kind of are, are like twins. They work very closely together. So um, anybody who's ever used keyword planners, I don't know, but if you haven't used keyword planners, go and check out keyword planners because you want to thread as many keywords of the people that you want to work with into your LinkedIn profile. I'm not saying you turn it into an SEO nightmare whereby you go on a website and it's like just saturated mm. with copy. Don't do it. My God, that's so boring. Those sites you need, yeah. you need infographic, you need a mixture. Um, but LinkedIn works the same way. Get your keywords in there, thread it through your description, thread it through your education, thread it through, yeah. you know, your hashtags. That's a key thing to do. Um, I would say a really great profile picture. These are the basics, but they're so important. 
make sure that your header as well on your header image you can go on canva you talk about canva all the time jason i love canva it's great go on canva get yourself a nice header image there's no excuse now for people saying i can't afford graphic designers well you can because you can do it it's there there's template Uh, it's so easy isn't it it's like two minutes to do it um and then what i would say is you've just got to be punchy so your opening headline on linkedin you've got to make sure that people at a glance if they just looked at you for two seconds like what's your elevator pitch what do you do like in two seconds tell me what you do that's your moment to say i help brands by Mm. making them popular i help brands by doing great seo um Mm. i am a trader and i work with individuals to do x y and z yeah and if you're just really punchy don't don't babble forget the babble get punchy (laughs) I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I lose, I, I, I've seen so many entrepreneurs and, and, and I kind of say, what do you do? And they're like, we help people's creative minds come alive and become innovative. <laughs> they get thought, too clever. Thought leaders. And I'm like, how do, how, how do you do that? Like, what is that? And, exactly. and, 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 it, and people don't want that. People want to look, I change people's, you know, I help people lose weight. That'd be like bang. That, that's Done. very clear. Done. Exactly. <laughs> that's what exactly. it says on the tin. That, and then tell them a little bit more about your process and, and give them what they need, but tell them what they want first. Uh, exactly. <laughs> all right. Okay. So really, really valuable information, mate. Um, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, if you have got value from this, obviously, Jonathan, it, we're just about to launch, well, we're just launching our personal growth module inside the Tears of Freedom platform as we record this. And Jonathan is uh, a very close advisor inside the Tears of Freedom program, and all of his content is available in there. But um, tell us how they can find you outside that program should they want to connect with you, Jonathan. Yeah, totally. So you can find me on LinkedIn. That's a good place to start, isn't it? Um, so if you just search Jonathan Holton, um, I do have a custom URL. So again, another little thing, if you haven't got a custom URL on LinkedIn, that's something really cool to do. So mine is Jonathan Holton forward slash LI strategist. Couldn't get LinkedIn because somebody had taken it. Don't know who, um, but LI strategist is there. You can connect me by the website, which is uh, the influencer And uh, you can also get a copy of my free book there that's available for download 50 K in 50 pages, sorry, 500 K in 50 pages. Um, that's available for you. So um, yeah, you can connect with me on social anywhere or even through Jason. We're good pals anyway. So uh, I'm sure he'll connect us up uh, if you want to go through yep. him you can do that as well. But yeah, it'd be great to touch base. Amazing. Yeah. All the links and everything for Jonathan's details will be below in the description of wherever you're watching this or listening to it. And um, with that said, I think that's a very valuable session. Guys, take action. And I've got a sign behind me. It says risk it or lose the chance. And this is the chance that couldn't be more, you know, perfectly apt for this situation that we're in. Make 2020 is the roaring 2020s. Get out there and raise your personal brand. And I just want to wish you to stay safe, stay home, and uh, have a great rest of your day and weekend. And I'll see you then. to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongraystone.com.